This is the kind of question where um, I'm going to take advantage of what we looked at in terms of the, the general term earlier on this morning um, so that you can see how I don't have to write out all the terms and that, that will help me. So before I get to the general term, I'm going to take this and what I'm looking for is in the expansion of this thing, which by the way has how many terms? Think about it with me. Just look at the right hand part here. 1 plus x to the power of 11. How many terms will that have if I expand just that? There will be 12 terms, right? You start from 0, you go all the way up to 11, so there's the 12 terms. Now if I expanded that thing out, it would have 12 terms, but then I multiply it by this, which has 3 terms, right? So therefore, there will be these 12, then another 12, then another 12, there will be 36 terms, and I assume there will be a lot of white terms in there, right? So some of them are going to collect together, but it's going to be a bit of a mess. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to do a partial expansion of this so that you can see what is going on and how I'm going to use the general term to help me. So here's my partial expansion. Maybe you want to follow along with me. Okay? If I just expand out the left-hand pair of brackets, right? what this means is two lots of this minus 5x lots of this plus x squared lots of this. Do you agree? Uh, that's, that's all it means, okay? So this by this, this by this, this by this, cool, that's fine. Okay. Now, you can see that out of each of these rows, there will be exactly one term that contributes to the x to the 9 in the final line. Do you see that? Follow with me, right? Have a look at this first line, for instance. If you get, forget about the 2 for a minute, in here there will be exactly one term which has an x to the 9 in it. Do you agree? Yeah. That term gets multiplied by 2, and eventually it mixes together with these other guys, and that'll be part of the x to the 9 term. Have a look at this line here. Okay. Again, the 1 plus x to the 11, it'll give you an x to the 9 term, but I don't want that term, do I? I actually don't want it. Why not? Why don't I want it? Yeah, thinner. Because you want the x to the 5 term. Okay, I want a different power of x. The reason why it's not x to the power of 9 is because it gets multiplied by x when I expand all my brackets out. So it will actually become an x to the 10. Therefore, the term I really want in here is the x to the 8 term. Do you agree? Because once I get an x to the 8 term out of here, it'll get expanded with this and it will become part of the x to the 9. Are you following with me? Now one last time. In here, which of the terms do I want that will contribute to the x to the 9 eventually? It'll be the x to the 7 because it gets multiplied by this. All good. Okay. So here's now what I'm going to do. I'm going to note that I can work out what each of these are because each one of these oops, is going to look exactly the same. Right? All the 12 terms will be identical, okay? uh, which means all 36 will be. Just different values of like powers and NCR notation. Okay? So let's write down together what will be the general term of this expansion. Three pieces, what's the first one? I'm looking for the general term, right? It's going to be 11C R. Right? It's the general term, so it could be any term at the moment. Yeah? So there's the binomial bit. Then there's going to be some of these. How many? Remember, it's the general term. That many. And then there'll be some of these, namely this many. Uh, sorry, 11 months I always do that. Are you OK with that? Yeah. Now let me just point out, remember I said to you, um, we've written it with the 1 first and the x second, but it's exactly the same if I turn it around. Yeah. In this case, I actually am going to turn around. I wonder if you can see why. If I write it like this instead, x to the r, 1 to the 11 minus r. Can you see why this just had a tiny edge? This will still give you the right answer, but this is just a teeny little bit easier to work with. Can anyone see why? Yeah, oh, almost. Other way around. 1 
to the power of anything, even something messy and weird, it's always going to give you one. Right? So if you've got a messy power and you've got ones, which by the way happens a lot, you might as well attach the messy looking power to the one and then you can just not worry about it. Does that make sense? Okay. So in this bracket, I want the x to the 11 term. Uh, 9, sorry, wrong power. Here. In this bracket, I want the x to the 8 term. And in this bracket, I want the x to the 7 term. Okay. So therefore, I can pull them all out right now. Watch. I'm going to stop writing equals because the thing I'm going to write next is not all the terms. It's not the whole expansion. It's just the ones that I want. Okay. So I'm going to write the x to the 9 term equals, okay, one step at a time. Firstly, up here, it'll be 2 times, okay, have a look. What value of r, it's an easy one, will give me an x to the 9? r equals 9, right? Do you see, by the way, had I chosen this version, I still could have gotten it, but the r wouldn't be 9. The r would be 2, because that would be 11 minus 2 would give you 9. It still works, it's just you've got to do subtraction in your head. And if we can avoid that, why not? So here we go, here's the bit inside, 11 C9, uh, I'm here, aren't I? X to the 9, 1 squared. You okay with that? That's the particular term in here that's useful to me, and I ignore the rest. Then I move to the next part, it's a minus extent. Minus 5X here, and then I pull out the X to the 8 term, which I'm actually very good at working out now. It's just 11 C8, X to the 8, 1 cubed. Are you with me? See, the, the whole point of using the general term is that it does all the legwork for you and then you just put numbers in and that's, that's the easy bit. Last one, plus x squared. Okay, can you tell me what to write now? 11 C, 7, x to the 7, 1 to the 4. Okay, now clearly, I mean we picked we picked this so we didn't have to worry about the ones. However, I'm going to encourage you, like I've said it maybe 20 times in the last five days, okay, that a binomial expansion, every term has one, two, three pieces. And even though ones do happen a lot, so they're, they're nice and simple, they don't always happen. So you want to get in the rhythm of this piece, this piece, this piece, and then you can expand. Can we just quickly work out the answer? Uh, it's minus 30. Well, okay. So you've, you've already evaluated everything out. Yeah. Can I actually get, can I get some numbers? So 11 C9, what is that going to be? 110. Thank you. And there's an X to the 9. Uh, oh, that's, you've already doubled. This is 55 then. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't clear what I was working out. Like that. In here, I'm going to get minus 5 times. 165. 165. And again, there's x to the 9. You can see that. Right? And then last one, plus 11c7. Thank you. x to the 9. Okay? And then I would write the final line. And the reason why is because this line is important. This line matters to me. It shows me you can understand what's going on and not just push buttons. Okay. So now you can tell me the answer, which is? That's the x to the 9 term. Okay? So that was still a lot of legwork. Like we had to think really hard to do it. But clearly it's superior to writing out all 36 terms and then identifying which ones of them are the ones we collect and then go from there. Okay? So this is how the general term is useful to us, right? It's not just a oh this is kind of curious, but it's a real tool that's quite handy. Okay?